it shouldn't be considered penalty because he cannot disappear right after. So I was surprised, but in the end... Listen, sometimes me and Luis Garcia will never agree. A quick reaction to Celta Vigo versus Real Madrid post-match analysis. Their record against Celta Vigo is a very strong one. They extend the longest active unbeaten streak against the side that is now standing that figure at 19 Real Madrid against a single opponent in La Liga. As you can see, the longest active unbeaten streak for Real Madrid is against Celta Vigo. So today, as I expected, another win against Celta Vigo because somehow we always somehow managed to win against Celta Vigo. And thinking that this would be a tight win for Real Madrid, 1-0 it finished in the end. Was it a worthy one? Yeah, it was. And I think it's the, the only time that the three of us uh, have gave the same result and we got it right. Three big points, we have to say that, but again, I think they struggled just too much. We'll see what happened with the, the injury of Vinicius Jr. They have so many problems on the build-up in transition when they have to create chances. It was uh, Rodrigo, the only player who maybe we can say that he was doing something different, something out of the box, but very plain, very um, predictable, this Real Madrid that against Celta de Vigo, a team that he assigned four players with for a very low budget, and uh, they struggled just too much. It's only three games, and we will be seeing what this Real Madrid is is missing, and of course they need to improve in the in the coming games. Listen, three games and three win, so total nine points out of nine possible. I think that's already great result-wise. I have to agree with Luis Garcia about the performance today. If you look at our performance today, it's not really exciting. It was kind of like unsparing often time we were predictable especially at moving the ball one thing we had is that midfield control we had better midfield control because of a lot of young midfield despite we had midfield presence you also need to create chances but somehow there was something missing in the forward i would say we played just enough for a win if ancelotti is going to be relying on jude bellingham for the goals so far so good mm -hmm. What an incredible start mm. to your Real Madrid career. You know, almost propel your team, not quite single-handedly, but to nine points after three games, having scored four. And, you know, you look at the three games, the first goal, the goal in the game against Athletic Club where he finds space from the corner kick, the goal in the game away, where was it? Almeria. Mm. Almeria, where he gets a huge slice of luck. He's in the box again. Uh, from the deflection or the, the strike that comes in that then comes off him, deflects off the defender, back into his path, but he's in the box in the right place again. And again, this game today, he's in the right position at the right time. Well, he's clearly got an eye for goal. And that's the difference. When games are tight and your team's not performing, you need somebody to step up. It's been Benzema, it's been Vinicius Junior. Currently, it is the new sign in Bellingham. So today, Jude's performance wasn't as good as previous games. However, what he did is the most important thing, scoring goals when it matters. Sometimes you can have a little bit off game. However, can you make a difference when it matters? That's exactly what Jude Bellingham did today. I said today, Rodrigo was better player than Jude Bellingham. However, if you look at our goals, he scored four goals out of three matches. That's incredible for a midfielder. You're pretty critical of the physios today when Vinny Jr. got injured. But it's not a good sign for Real Madrid if that is a bad injury for Vinny. Well, uh, well clearly, yeah, because he is a hugely important player. And when you have a player who is as important, but not only that, relies on his pace and his speed, is Vinicius Jr. And he goes in this amazing solo run and quite clearly tells the medical staff mm. that he has a problem. And, and their answer to that is to take him to the side and put tape around a hamstring and send them back out. Honestly, I wouldn't expect to see that in an amateur game on a Sunday morning uh, with, the, with all the guys playing from down the pub. Because when a hamstring goes or a muscle goes, you send him back on, which they did, he then came off. Now, we don't know how bad it is, but if they sent him back on and he went in a full-out sprint and that hamstring, if it is a hamstring, goes, that's two to three months. So here I have to second with Craig Barley because when well, you have some issue with one of your biggest player, perhaps out argued one of the most important player for Real Madrid, you just can't take risks. Maybe our physio should have more cautious to evaluate what's the issue because sometimes you have to take the best decision by removing him 
so that he could recover. The good thing is that what we have seen the footage, it didn't look as bad as we thought it would be. So perhaps if he comes back next match, I would not be surprised. Our attacking depth is probably one of the lowest in the world right now. We have almost no one in our attack. Like look at our striker, there's no one. Hoselo, do you expect Hoselo to score so many goals? I don't expect personally. I see him as a backup striker. And if you look at our bench for our attack, there's almost not many options to have. And we're one of the best club and we don't have many attacking options. So when your attacking depth is already low, you just can't take risk. Luis, what did you make of the penalty incident? Okay, this will be spicy, I guess. Honestly, I think the, the, the keeper told the ball. Uh, again, you can tell me that, yeah, yes, a little bit or everything. I was trying to hear what the, the, the keeper saying right after the game and he was being interviewed. And I'm surprised that he didn't even go to, to have a look because from the VAR, they should have to tell him, listen, he told the ball. And once a keeper told the ball, it shouldn't be considered a penalty because he cannot disappear right after. So I was surprised, but in the end, and uh, nothing changed on the scoreline. Listen, sometimes me and Luis Garcia will never agree. Today's another incident for this penalty. When I saw that footage in slow motion, I thought there's a clear cut penalty because Goli touched Rodrigo and he fell off. However, Luis Garcia has a totally different point. It could be that I am biased toward Real Madrid and he's biased against Real Madrid. So we will never agree on this kind of decisions. Also, at the end of the day, it didn't matter who did you score. More importantly, it's still a question that we asked the first day of the season and that seemed like an afterthought. And we asked it when the penalty was about to be taken. Who takes penalties for Real Madrid? So in the past, one time I talked about this, like who should take penalty for Real Madrid this season. My top list was number one, Rodrigo, number two, Modric, number three, Tony Cruz. And, and so on. I still think Rodrigo should be our number one penalty taker unless we sign a top name as our striker or forward this season. But yeah, I think there are bigger problems for both big clubs, Barcelona and Real Madrid in particular, than, than, than that issue. I think the general play, I still think that left-back position is a problem with Fran Garcia there. Mm. Uh, they're not getting a lot from him. And I think he's really... And we didn't see it much, but we saw it once, uh, Strand Larson on a one-to-one -one with him. I mean, if you have anybody with any sort of physical presence at the back post, and they're going to out-jump him every day of the week. If, some, if you can get a team who are able to get good crosses in from their left-hand side uh, to that left-back position of, of Real Madrid, that could be an issue for them against better teams. But that's a good point by Craig, that that's a big weakness for Real Madrid this season. He will not win any header against anybody in the world. Second, if you look at Celta's attack today, all of their attacks was going through our left side where Fran Garcia plays. Many times today, what we have seen today is that he's out of position. Also today, in general, he did not have great game, I would say. Last game, I, was, I thought he was decent. But today, that's not the case. Also, performance-wise, we can also talk about Kappa, who played today. If we compare Kapp Kappa versus, say, Lunin, Kappa looked more confident. Also, the passing from Kappa is much better than Lunin. One of weakness of Lunin is that he's passing. Additionally, today we also saw a tactical tweak that's really important. I think we have to discuss about it. Is that Fede Valverde was moved as a kind of defensive midfielder with Tony Cruz which gave Cruz a little bit more freedom to move a little bit in the left side. I think that's a good decision. In fact, I don't trust Tony Cruz at CDM position. So I think playing Fede in that position is better than playing Tony Cruz in that position. Anyway, three huge points despite not so exciting performance. Let me know your thoughts about today's performance.